what is your area of compromise? What is that area that you can say the enemy has creeped in? What is that area that you've been operating in behind closed doors? Don't nobody else know, but everybody in your house. I heard a man of God say, and I had to laugh. He say, he say, yeah, he say, a lot of the men be sitting up and sharing all of these great things that are going on with them. He say, but I look at the wife. And I can tell what's going on in the house. I'm just saying. And so it was all of these things that caused the kingdom to be rent out of Solomon's son's hand. When God told David, he says, I will establish your kingdom forever. He says, and if your children will obey, I will continue this, but at least God allowed his boys, his, his, his children to have uh, that one tribe. So he didn't rent them all, but he rent the uh, 11 out of the 12 out of his hands. What do you have to lose before you acknowledge that the enemy is actively operating in your life? This is a deliverance and prophetic conference. And if we're here to be delivered and be prophesied to, then let God do what he wants to do in your life. Where do you find yourself? Where do you find yourself in the word of God tonight? Are you hearing me? Not only did God rend the kingdom, the Bible says that God gave Solomon peace from his enemies. That's what he said. 1 Kings, the 4th chapter and the 24th verse. But when you jump down to 1 Kings, the 11th chapter, and starting at the 14th verse, the Bible says, and I want to go here for a minute. The Bible says in the 14th verse, so we're already in the 11th chapter, right? And let's go on down to the 14th verse. But I want to deal with this issue. It says, and the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. Hadad the Edomite, he was the king seed in Edom. And then jump down to the 23rd verse. It says, and God stirred him up another adversary, Rezin, the son of e e Eliadah, which fled from his lord Had Hadad Ezer, king of Zobah. And in the 26th verse, it says, and Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, the Ephraimite of Zerada, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zura, a widow, even he lifted up his hand against the king. In the name of Jesus, this person then risen up against me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and I bind that spirit in them. In the, what if the Lord rose up an enemy against you? Who are you binding up now? Are you hearing me? What you going to shut down in? God allowed that woman to operate like she did on my job this year. I needed to be pruned some more. I needed to be sharpened some more. I needed to mature some more. I needed to grow up some more. God was angry with Sodom. And he allowed these folks to, he, the Bible says he stirred them up against him. Hallelujah. Can you receive that? Now you're going to look at your enemies differently, right? Lord, what am I supposed to be getting out of this? Because Sister Veda said, you know, your word says that you'll stir up an enemy against me. What's going on in my life? that I need to be dealt with on this level. I can call Mother Ruth and everybody else, but if God allowed it to happen, we got to walk this one out. Lord, strengthen me, gird me up so I can get through this battle and walk through it and get out of it what I need to get out of it, amen? So I want to take a minute on that. Hmm. And listen to this all the way down in the 33rd verse, because they have forsaken me 
and have worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of Zidonians, and Shemash, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in my eyes and to keep my statutes and my judgments as David their father did. God was not pleased. But I want to tell you a bit of good news. I know I've been telling you a lot of bad news, right? It's like, oh, man. The Bible says Jesus prayed. That's what he told Peter. He says, I pray for you, Peter. And when you look in the book of John, the 17th chapter, the Bible says that he prayed for us too. He told Peter, he says, I pray for you. And Jesus has already gone before us. And he has prayed for us. He sees our victory. He sees our purpose. He sees our blessing. And there are areas in our life that we've got to allow him to deal with and deliver us from so that we can have the blessing. 